Hi everyone, welcome into this week's My Weekly CBS Fix. I hope you had a great week. This week's video is dedicated as a Rufu Shlema for Shalom Dovah Matcha Ben Ruchel and for Nachama Batschai Rivka. May you both have a Rufu Shlema Bakarif. In this week's parsha, we read from the parsha of Emar, which talks about the holy stature of the Kohen, the Kohen Gadol, the Kohanim in general. So if you're a Kohen, feel fortunate. And in this week's Haftorah, we read from the book of Yechaskal Ezekiel, chapter 44, in which he talks about how in the future, when Mashiach comes, it will be the children, the descendants of Tzadik HaKohen, who was steadfast in his faithfulness to Hashem. Hashem said it will be the descendants of Tzadik, Tzadok HaKohen. They will be the ones to serve in the third temple. Maybe merit to see it in our days. And the, Torah, and the prophet continues on to tell us the different laws regarding the Kohanim. And it reiterates that the Kohanim have a prohibition to defile, to defile themselves to somebody who passes away. Yet, the Torah says that to family members, brother, sister, father, mother, his wife, he is allowed to defile himself. So the question is why? So one answer is if he doesn't take care of this corpse that passed away, it'll be neglected and it's very shameful for the body and th that shame is even more important than the status of the Kohen. We'll keep that answer on the side. We'll come back to it in a second. The second answer is that the Kohen who serves in the temple is supposed to do the Avodah with a lot of joy. But if he's very distressed at his brother's death, so he cannot serve in death, in joy. And so therefore, he's allowed to mourn. The mourn helps him grieve. Once he grieves, he comes back to himself and he can become joyful again. The third of it, the third, the third answer is we have a general rule, alibo. the person who is alive, whenever he goes to the cemetery, he takes it to mind and he says, you know, one day that's going to be me down there. I better I better start living life. I better start changing my ways. I better make sure that I get a big portion in the world to come. I better mend my ways. What am I going to say to Hashem? And so therefore, it's very, very important, very, very important for everybody, including the Kohen, that he should go to a cemetery like this. He starts thinking about his future, figures out how to mend his ways here, mend his ways over here, and change. However, there's one exception to this. The one exception to this is the Kohen Gadol. The Kohen Gadol, he is not allowed, to, not allowed to defile himself at all, except for answer number one, if it's what, a mes mitzvah, if there's nobody else around to take care of the needs of said corpse, even if it's not a family member, he is allowed to take care of that person and bury that person, even if he's going to defile himself. However, in any other scenario, in any other case of a family member, he is not allowed to defile himself. The question is, why not? The question is, why not? We just got through saying that the Kohen, he's going to feel stress. He's going to feel, he's, he's not going to feel, he's not going to feel joy. So his emotions aren't in check. So why is the Kohen Gadol any different? But we're learning over here that to become the Kohen Gadol, that means the best of the best. The Torah didn't just say this general guy can be the head priest. No, you had to be a real somebody. And being a real somebody, we're seeing from the Torah over here, somebody who can put their emotions in check. And somebody that actually is above their emotions. And somebody that can understand that everything is controlled by Hashem. Which means that the Kohen Gadol is so great that he's able to reach a level which he does not grieve over the loss of a loved one. Now, to us, that may seem callous. And in a certain sense, it's true. And that's why he had to defile himself until this point that he became a Kohen Gadol, when he became a Kohen Gadol, before he became a Kohen Gadol. When he was a regular Kohen, he actually had to go to the cemetery. And he had to take care of of his mother or whoever it was that passed away. But eventually he learns from that and he grew for that from that. And he's able to raise his mind and his awareness of Hashem to an even higher level that he doesn't feel any grief and he can actually remain in joy. And the humility that he would feel from going to the cemetery, he has that at all times. And so therefore he didn't need to learn the lessons of what it means to go into the cemetery. He had that. And that's what we're seeing over here. That the great Torah leaders were ones that were in control over their emotions. Of course, they went through the training while they were younger. But that's exactly what made them great. They went to the next level. 
they were able to become the Kohen Gadol. What does that mean for us? What that means for us is we can also take it to the next level. And we can, and we, like we spoke last week, we always have to keep in mind that everything that happens is from Hashem. There's no Kohanim Gedolim today, unfortunately, because we don't have that, but we can become great Torah leaders. And great Torah leaders, again, means developing our minds to believe that everything that Hashem does is for the best. And keeping our emotions in check is so, so important. It's a time to be sad. It's a time to be happy. It's a time for everything. But if it's a time to be sad, don't be happy. If it's time, it's the time to be happy, don't be sad. You can't be wishy-washy. You can't be emotional about your life. Everything has its time and everything has to be streamlined to the right time, the right place. That is what the Kohen Gadol was. He had that power that's very powerful to be able to do that, to keep all your emotions in check. It's a very powerful thing. Thank you for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos.